Good morning. My name is Jim Bedix, and I'm going to be the host of today's webinar. But before we get started, I just wanted to go over a couple of housekeeping items. So the content today will have about 20 to 25 minutes. We'll try to reserve at least five minutes at the end for questions. If you do have any questions along the way, please go ahead and put them in the questions applet in the GoToWebinar app, and we'll try to address them at the end. If for any reason we run out of time before we get to all the questions, we'll actually answer them directly to you via email. Also, at the conclusion of today's webinar, you're going to get a short survey shortly afterwards. If you fill that survey out and return it, that is what will make you eligible for the Starbucks gift card. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is HPE Synergy. And go ahead and get started here. So HPE Synergy is an entirely new class of infrastructure from HPE. You may have heard the term composable infrastructure. That is the term HPE has assigned to Synergy. And we're going to go through today and explain what that is and what it means to you. First, when Synergy was being designed, there were a couple of key design principles that HPE followed. Synergy is designed to run any workload that could be physical, virtual, or containers. It's designed to run those workloads at a more cloud-like pace. So deploying and updating those workloads efficiently, without friction, and more at a cloud-like speed was a key design principle. By following that, you'll be able to unlock more value in the hardware purchase that you make and develop and your infrastructure much faster and deploy your code or your apps like code. So let's look at some of these design principles. What makes a composable infrastructure? Three key pillars are followed for any composable infrastructure. First, we need a fluid pool of resources. These resources could be compute, storage, or network, and they're the underlying basis for any composable infrastructure. Second, we need to have software-defined intelligence. The software-defined intelligence allows us to use templates to compose our workloads as well as update them in the future. Third, and probably most critical, is a unified API. This unified API is the gateway that allows us to control the hardware via software and really trust your infrastructure and provision it like code. These are the keys to a composable infrastructure. Let's take a closer look at the composable components of the Synergy framework. First, we'll have the composer. We'll drill into that shortly and talk about it in more detail. This is really the management infrastructure that makes composable happen. Secondly, we have composable compute resources, composable fabric, and composable storage, all contained within the composable frame. Let's take a deeper look at each component now. The management interface for the composable infrastructure is the actual composer appliance itself running HPE OneView. Additionally, we have some new technology that can manage the infrastructure called ImageStreamer. We'll talk about that in detail in a little bit. OneView will manage the infrastructure by using templates to allow you to repeat processes over and over without human error. Also, the ability to do frictionless change from a firmware and driver perspective, as well as even expanding the environment is included. And finally, the unified API and developer portal are key to running the infrastructure as code. The frame itself. For some customers out there, you may be familiar with previous generations of blade infrastructure technology from HPE, the C-Class product. If you are, you'll notice when you look at the new frame of Synergy, there are some key differences. Although Synergy is composable, if you wanted to use it simply as a replacement for your C-Class blades, you can do that as well. 
It takes the same 10U in the rack and uses the same power supplies as your C-Class infrastructure. However, you'll notice that it's got embedded management appliances, double the bandwidth for all your bays, and is pre-capable of photonics for the future. So all the best of what you had in Blade system, but even better, plumbed for the future. The management appliances, today there are two. The Composer itself, which runs HPE OneView, which is really the heart of the infrastructure and Synergy system, as well as the Image Streamer, which is a specialized management appliance used for booting and updating in a frictionless world. The frame we already talked about a little bit, double the bandwidth of previous generations, with over 15 terabits of bandwidth capability in a passive midplane. We're photonic ready, so as the market moves from copper traces to photonics, the investment in the frame would be protected. And then we have redundant management modules that are air-gapped at 10 gig speeds to provide interconnects at today's technology levels. Taking a closer look at both the front and the back, you'll see some of the components called out on this slide. This shows you basically every capable component that we could put into a Synergy frame. Not every frame will look like this, but if we wanted to, you could build it out. You'll see a mix of both half and full height compute modules, as well as a double wide compute module, a storage module, which we'll talk a little bit about later, the composer and the image streamer, and then on the back, you'll notice that we have three sets of redundant fabrics. And these fabrics could be SAS, Ethernet, fiber channel, or any mix thereof. Let's talk about the photonic ready for just a second. This is a big differentiator between Synergy and some of the other infrastructure that's out on the market today. So current workloads have a traditional ceiling of about 240 gigabits per second per server. As we move forward with newer modules, newer compute, and newer interconnects, higher speed bandwidth is going to be required. The Synergy frame is designed not only to deal with today's 240 gigabit limit, but to move up through the path between 600 and up to even 12.8 terabits in the future as these speed improvements come to us. Dig a little deeper into the composer now. One of the main changes of the composer is that there's actually different roles that could be used to manage it. From a deployment standpoint, Synergy was designed to be installed in the rack by someone with a limited skill set. Let's call them an installation technician. The role of this person is basically to get the enclosure mounted, get it cabled up to the core network, power it on, and be able to assign some basic IPs for management and do a health check to make sure that everything was done. One view, which is built into the Synergy infrastructure, will check for any miscabled connections and alert the installation technician of what needs to be fixed. Once he has the infrastructure completely cabled properly with a management IP on it, it can be turned over to the infrastructure admin. The infrastructure admin is more typical of what we see most people today running with their C-class blades. The infrastructure admin can set up the compute network and storage resources, as well as provisioning templates and update policies. Different here than today's current infrastructure from other vendors as well as C-Class Blades is the third person on the right here. The consumption of these resources can now be done directly by line of business owners, IT ops, or even developers without having to come back to the IT admin. This is a significant change over today's infrastructure. Allowing developers direct control over hardware is something that is not normally done. A little bit more about the management. Besides the Synergy Composer, we also have the Image Streamer. We talked basically about this to do image repositories and boot location for a number of servers within the frame. And then talking about the frame itself, we actually have the ability to manage up to 21 frames 
in a single management ring. You'll notice here that we only need two composers to provide redundancy, whether we have one frame or up to 21 frames. This simplifies the management of the environment. The composers are also responsible for auto-discovering all of that hardware. That's done without intervention by the installation technician and it automatically discovers even as you expand. The goal of the composer was really to reduce the complexity required to stand up the infrastructure today. For those of you that may be familiar with other bladed products or even HPE blade system, you'll know there's multiple management interfaces that are used to provision the environment, provision the servers, and then eventually manage and update the environment. With Synergy, this is all handled through one management interface, one view, which is running on the composer. This makes for a much simplified deployment, allows you to scale much easier, and accelerate the pace of change in your environment. Take a closer look at exactly what the composer is doing. In one view, we may have a library of templates already defined for some server workloads. Underlying in the Synergy frame are resources for compute, storage, and network. When we need to provision one of these workloads, we'll simply deploy a template, in this case, an ERP template. We'll request some compute, some storage, and some networking, and it'll be supplied to us from the underlying pool of resources. We can then deploy another workload, in this case, maybe a mobile image. Again, once deployed, we have some compute and some storage that are consumed. And then when this workload's no longer needed, we can actually uninstall it, and the resources are returned to the pool. Future workloads, such as this cloud image, can then reuse those resources. And we could even expand upon that by simply modifying the template. So now we've grown the storage and compute needed for this workload without having to reprovision. Again, the power here of having the fluid pool of resources controlled by the templates. Let's talk a little bit more in detail about Image Streamer. Image Streamer is a new type of technology. It's designed to efficiently deploy hardware by booting off of a shared image or golden repository. This means you can lower your total costs by not supplying expensive SanDisk for boot devices or by tying physical hardware to the environment. As you can see, in a traditional deployment, you might have an image of your OS already. You may have deployed a deployment plan, but you have to deploy that on every single server sort of the rinse and repeat method here. So to get three servers running, I follow these same instructions over and over and over again, where I boot the server, install the operating system, customize it, reboot, install my app, customize it, reboot again, and then finally I have a running server. So even if you have this down in an automated fashion, it could take minutes to hours to deploy. With Image Streamer, we simply have a golden image that has the operating system and potentially any applications that you need stored, and then that becomes the boot image of your servers. Multiple servers can boot from the same image at the exact same time, which cuts down the time required to deploy those servers. Then, if at a future point we need to update the boot image, we simply deploy image two, and it's pushed out to all those servers. All the servers are updated, and it could take as little as 15 seconds to reboot, come up, and be running on the new version or new operating system. By coupling the hardware templates in one view, along with the image streamer software deployment, we truly have moved to stateless computing. We can adjust the physical resources required or the operating system required to boot a server at any point in time both together or individually. 
This is a main shift for Synergy compared to other technologies in the marketplace today. When you look at it, Synergy really does save you a lot of time by using ImageStreamer to deploy these templates. Here, as you can see, the typical provisioning process would require provisioning of the hardware, which is actually less time than it takes typically to deploy the OS and software required on the server. With ImageStreamer, the initial hardware deployment would be handled by the composer, but ImageStreamer would handle the operating system and software deployment, shortening that deployment time. And then at the bottom, if we needed to re image that server with a new operating system version or change the operating system. We don't need to reprovision the hardware. We simply point to that new boot image. The time required to reconfigure that server is even shorter. Now let's talk about the compute available in the Synergy framework. As you can see, there are multiple compute modules available from half height to full height to double wide full height to closely match the workloads in your environment. This could be anything from general purpose applications or line of business apps up to virtualization and even the largest memory driven databases on the market today. All of these compute options also have the ability to include local storage, adapters, or even accelerated graphics for things like VDI if needed. The one caveat with local storage, you're going to take away some of the ability to streamline your deployment because if we have physical devices that are actually in those servers, then we're actually locking workloads down to those compute modules. In an image streamer world, we wouldn't use any local storage. We would boot and run right off of the image streamer. However, we know that there are some workloads where local storage is still required. And in that case, you can see we support both spinning disk, SSD, NVMe, dual flash drives, which gives you the ability to actually have a RAID 5 set up in a half height compute plate. Or we could go diskless with image streamer or boot off micro SD or SD cards. The adapters give you flexibility for connecting to SaaS storage, Ethernet networks, or fiber channel storage. And as I mentioned, the graphics accelerated NVIDIA cards for doing workloads such as VDI. Now we'll take a look at the composable fabric. Who's seen a picture like this in their environment on the left? This is more what traditional infrastructure or even some bladed infrastructure can look like. All the cable spaghetti. On the right, with HP Synergy, you'll notice that's an actual design with four frames in a single rack, and that's all the cabling that's required. So we could greatly simplify the cabling of the environment as well as the deployment of your hardware. The way that's done is by using the Synergy composable fabric. The composable fabric helps you to eliminate the need for top of rack switches and allows you to match your workloads and your compute to exactly what you need in fabric services. All the fabrics within Synergy are redundant and resilient. The difference here is in our master satellite design. The master modules one on the A fabric and one on the B fabric can be thought of as the intelligent switch of the infrastructure. All of the brains and all of the work is done in those modules. However, when we expand to multiple frames, we don't need master modules in every frame. We can instead use something called a satellite module. The satellite module connects back to the master at full non-blocking bandwidth and uses the intelligence in the master to handle the packet forwarding and switching decisions in the satellites. This greatly reduces costs and allows us to greatly reduce the need for cabling to top of rack or possibly even eliminate top of rack switches. Synergy framework can have up to three of these redundant fabrics configured in a master satellite arrangement.
On the left here, you'll notice our composable infrastructure modules. The Virtual Connect 40 gig F8 handles both 40 gig Ethernet as well as fiber channel or fiber channel over Ethernet at eight gig speeds. If you need higher bandwidth for your fiber channel, there are Virtual Connect 16 gig fiber channel modules available. If your infrastructure uh, admins do not like the idea of Virtual Connect, which we've had in the past with some Blade System customers. We also do offer traditional fabrics where they're actual switch modules, pass-through modules, um, and fiber channel switch modules that are available if that fits your management uh, model closer. Ideally, in a composable world, you would want to be using Virtual Connect, though. Take a look at how this actually works and how it makes your life easier for expansion. So if we start with a single frame design with the Virtual Connect master modules in there, we can expand to a second or even third frame on demand without having to recable or take down the infrastructure by simply adding the new frames with satellite modules and cabling them up to the masters. During this build out, you'll also notice that all frames and all compute modules in the frames are treated for east-west traffic. This means we don't need to go to a top of rack or end of row switch to pass traffic between frames or even servers within different frames. This is a significant design difference over some of the competitive blade products on the market today. Finally, we're going to wrap up with some of the composable storage options today. You'll notice that Synergy is designed to handle any storage option on the marketplace today as well. We'll have a storage drawer that allows for local storage. We have the ability to connect to external storage for file, block, or object store. And we could connect any compute module in the frame to any of these storage options. The direct attached storage drawer is something unique to Synergy. Each drawer allows you to put up to 40 storage devices internally in it, and we could have up to five drawers in a frame. That provides for a large pool of JBOD storage or the ability to actually layer on software-defined storage, such as HP Store Virtual VSA, or even a certified design with VMware vSAN. This allows you to have your compute and your storage all within a single fabric framework. If you need external storage, we have the ability to directly attach HPE 3PAR, as well as fabric attach other storage from HPE or third-party vendors. So inside the portfolio, we talked a little bit earlier, we do have local storage available in the compute modules. We have the ability to do that direct attached storage, something different than most other folks in the market today, or the ability to attach via NAS or SAN connections. Basically, any topology that you could think of, we could connect to a Synergy framework. I get a lot of questions about the local storage. A lot of people think that uh, local storage died a long time ago. Um, and really, this, this slide should call out that that's not the case. So you can see on here that we can actually drive up to 2 million IOPS using local storage alone. This would be with multiple storage drawers going through the two redundant SAS fabrics. But it's a very intensive workload that I think a lot of people don't realize you could do with local storage today. On the flip side, when I show this slide, a lot of people then ask me, well, if I could do that much with local storage, why do I still need my tier one array? The important thing to remember here is while we have a lot of bandwidth to get to the storage, the storage is not intelligent. This is either JBOD, where there's no features, or you're going to need to layer on some software-defined storage on top, like the HP VSA or VMware vSAN to provide capabilities like RAID, deduplication, encryption, and compression that will be dependent on your storage provider at the software layer. If you need replication or other advanced data services, that's still typically handled best by a tier one array, but you do have a lot of options here with Synergy that you don't have in some of the other players in the market today. 
And with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and I will open it for questions. So if you do have any questions, please go ahead and type them in there. I think I see one here. Question about how do you get RAID 5 out of the dual flash drives? So the dual flash drive carrier, each carrier actually holds two micro form factor flash drives. So in two bays, we actually have four drives. That's how you would get the RAID 5. Any other questions? Okay, I'll give it just one more minute. And while we're thinking about if there's any other questions, just want to put up a reminder here that to be eligible for your Starbucks gift card, you do need to fill out the post-event survey, which will be distributed shortly. And I'll do one more check here if we have any more questions. And it looks like we don't. So I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar here. Thank you for your time. And hopefully we can schedule a demo of Synergy for you in the future. Thank you.